Hey guys, welcome to the Start Your Fashion Business channel. My name is Stephanie and I am the host of this channel and I don't know if a lot of you know this, but I'm also a sustainable brand owner and I'm an ethical garment producer. I'm super passionate about fashion um, and that's why I have an online course called the Start Your Fashion Business Course, which is an eight week online mentorship program. And I've already had students part of the program now and yeah, it's, it's something I launched last month. So it's really cool and if you want to know more about it, you can check it out in the description box. There's a link called www.startyourfashionbusiness.com. You can check it out right there. But today I actually am creating this video because I want to talk about a few things. Now, I see that, you know, I have clients that want to start a sustainable fashion line and then I also just see that sustainable fashion is a growing trend especially this year because people are more aware about the negative impact that the fashion industry has on the planet you know it's really bad i'm not going to go into detail um because that's going to be for another video and to be honest it's kind of really depressing but today i want to talk to you about if you want to start a sustainable fashion line and how you can do it you know because sustainable fashion is just so much more than just creating fashion with eco-friendly materials, right? It's not just that, like, it goes deeper than that. So, as a sustainable brand owner myself, and this is my brand here called This Is A Love Song, and also as an ethical garment producer, I have a company called Tala Studio that helps a lot of brands with their sampling and their production. I even help them with their development. So I basically hold their hand from the very beginning. So through all of these experiences, it kind of inspired me to make this video because I know that so many people are interested in creating their own fashion brand. And I think if you can and you're super passionate about fashion, you should go for it, especially this year with everything that's going on. You want to be able to create a business that you're passionate about that can also sustain you, but also sustain the planet, right? So before we get right in, I want to talk first about what does sustainability mean? Because sustainability has three pillars and the three pillars is the people, the planet, and of course profit. Typical businesses or normal businesses, they are only based on two pillars, which is the people and the profit. And as you know, that's why a lot of fast fashion brands, they only care about the profit and I guess a little bit about the people, but they don't care about the planet. So if you want to start a sustainable clothing line, you must in, like involve these three Ps. And so this pillar, these three pillars have to be the foundation of your business. Now, in order to create a successful sustainable fashion line, you first have to define your target market. I mean, now being a sustainable fashion brand is not special anymore. I mean, two years ago, yes, you know, that would be like already a winning point. But nowadays, especially at the rate that everything is going, um, fashion will become more sustainable and it will be more of a requirement. So, you know, you have to stand out, right? So you have to define your brand and define it within your audience and to see if this is something your audience really, really wants. So, for example, Let's say you want to create a sustainable swimwear line. There's already some amazing sustainable swimwear lines, but of course, you know, like we cannot have enough swimwear. <laughs> However, perhaps a few of the sustainable swimwear lines are really expensive and perhaps your market is looking for something more affordable. So let's say you've done your research and you know maybe in your like location or your region, this is missing, right? So. Once you kind of nail that, that, then that means you're filling this market gap and that's why you're creating this, your products because you're catering to that market gap and what your potential customers or your ideal customers want to buy. So after that, of course, you would design it and designing sustainable fashion means that you're also designing sustainably because you're not designing um, styles that are going to be thrown out after one season 
So you, obviously when you're designing sustainable fashion, you're designing with sustainability in mind, meaning that you are making clothing or making pieces that are timeless, that are not just capitalizing on trends. Now I'm not saying that you cannot involve a trend. Of course you can, but design it with like a really long like life cycle in mind. Now, another important thing about sustainable fashion is that you need to use eco-friendly materials. So that's like one thing that's really important because if you're going to create a sustainable fashion line and you use, you use nylon that's not recycled, oh, you're not, you're not sustainable and your customers are going to be like, oh, why, why are you creating nylon? I mean, nylon is a man-made fiber and it's really bad for the environment. And thankfully now there's sustainable options available like recycled nylon, um, Econil, which is a yarn that uh, produces uh, recycled or regenerated nylon from like marine waste and all of that. And they make it into fabrics such as Carvico. And there's heaps out there. So what I'm saying is you need to do your research, figure out like if there is a sustainable option for what you want to create. So for instance, like this is my sustainable fashion brand, and this top that I've made, you know, I could easily make it in a rayon if I wanted to, but I decided to make it in bamboo. And this bamboo is very like cool because it's got that like creppy feel as well but it's 100% bamboo and it's actually really not bad for the environment at all. Now I do want to let you know that not all sustainable or eco-friendly materials are good for the environment. So you definitely have to dig a little deeper and make sure that these materials that you're using are like not hard, like harmful for the environment. And if let's say like, they're, you know, like recycled nylon, like it's still not amazing, but it's better for the environment because yeah, you're not um, setting off a crazy carbon footprint, but still you have to educate yourself because you're a brand and you're selling your products in this material. So you don't want to just take whatever is in the market and be like, oh yeah, this is sustainable without doing your research. You know, you have to know. And this is a way that you can educate your customers as well. So there's so many eco-friendly material, materials available. Now if you want to download an eco-friendly material, um, the digital library swatch book type of thing, um, you can find a link in the description box with an eco-friendly uh, fabric booklet that I have, for, that I basically have for my um, ethical garden studio. So you can flick through that you can like get yourself educated with all the options out there because this is really, really important. So number two, what else is important? So you've already figured out your eco-friendly materials. Now you got to find a manufacturer that can produce your products and can produce it in a way where it's not a sweatshop. Everything is produced ethically and they're environmentally conscious as well. Now, of course, this is going to be kind of funny, like the needle in the haystack. It's definitely not easy to find manufacturers, especially if you are a brand and you're starting with a lower MOQ. So an MOQ basically dictates how much you can produce and manufacturers may have an MOQ of a thousand. Some manufacturers will have a super low MOQ of 50. If you can find manufacturers that have an MOQ lower than 50, then that's insane. Um, but typically, um, low MOQs would start at 50 and they can range and this will depend on your manufacturer. Now the thing is, not all manufacturers will be able to create the products that you want to create. So I'm actually going to dedicate another video about this on how to find a good manufacturer and how to work with them. So check it out and that will be just focusing on that. But what I guess, what I want to say, I guess in this video is that if you want to create a sustainable fashion brand that you must need, you must find an ethical manufacturer because that's one of the three P's, right? It's the people and the planet and an ethical manufacturer will make sure that they're paying their workers fairly and that they're also 
doing good for the environment. Maybe they have like a renewable energy where they're not using plastic or perhaps they're not using chemical dyes. And these are things that you must think about because if you're a sustainable fashion brand, it is not just about using sustainable fabrics. That's one major thing, but it's also about who you employ. Like, is your fashion brand going to put other people at risk? Like, by creating your fashion brand, are you making someone else suffer? You know, so if you're a sustainable fashion brand, but you're being produced in a sweatshop, you're not sustainable. And that just, that is just so wrong. So you have to think about the human rights and that's going to be definitely like the hump in creating a sustainable fashion brand because there's definitely not that many good, like good or reliable ethical manufacturers yet. If you're looking for some manufacturer that is close, you know, in your country, that's some, that's probably something that you have to do your research. So, you know, get to Google and search your ethical manufacturer and make sure that you find one that really is able to cater to your needs and create your collection. All right, so then number three, the last one, it's about your packaging. Creating a sustainable fashion brand, like I said before, you have to think about the entire product cycle. You're not just thinking about, okay, I'm creating this design and then what, you know, like let's say your, um, fa your customer buys your products and then that's it, right? No, you're thinking about the entire life cycle, including your packaging. With this, I'm saying like you, you're probably not going to want to use plastic packaging. Again, that's single use that doesn't go with the whole thinking about the product cycle. So you want to stick with using no plastic at all whatsoever. Because if you're starting to use like plastic here and there, then you're not sustainable and that's so bad for the environment. But there's so many cool alternatives out there there's like um, compostable poly bags or like biodegradable bags. I use a bio cassava poly bag, which is made from cassava, the plant. And it's what I use as a poly bag and where I put all of our clothes in, especially when we ship them to our customers. And there's a few brands out there that even have like recycled poly mailers and all of this is really important for you to think about when you are creating your sustainable fashion brand, as well as like your hang tags. If you can use recycled hang tags, use recycled hang tags. If you don't really need so much packaging, then don't, you know, use so much packaging. I know packaging is nice and it can be an extension of your brand experience and like elevate the whole unboxing um, situation. But at the end of the day, people throw packaging out, you know, they take a picture of it if it's cute or they don't even and they throw it out. So you want to try to minimize that waste and really be sustainable throughout everything. So I hope that this is not too overwhelming for you. And I'll recap this again. So if you want to uh, create a sustainable clothing brand, you must first define your target audience and see if there's that that specific need right within the market again like if they want to have a sustainable swimwear line maybe they want an affordable sustainable swimwear line so that's number one the number two make sure that you're producing an eco-friendly fabrics because if your products are not using materials that are damaging to the environment then for sure you are not sustainable then number three is find a good ethical manufacturer and this is so important because you don't want to work with a sweatshop you don't want to work with a factory that does not pay their workers and they don't get treated fairly and i mean you hear so many horror stories just google run a plaza incident that's really bad and then number four you want to think about your packaging you want to make that sustainable too so there's lots for you to think about uh, i hope you wrote a lot of notes and I also want to say that I have an online course, so if you want to check that out, the link is in the description box. I talk about how to set up a sustainable fashion brand. So I'm covering so much in this eight-week online mentorship program. And otherwise, make sure to like this video, and I'm trying to grow my channel, so please subscribe. 
do let me know what else you want to see or what, what else you want to learn for my channel. And also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Start Your Fashion Business because I'm way more active there. So I do hope I get to see you um, in Instagram and then I'll also be dropping another video. So make sure to keep checking back to this channel if you want to learn about all things fashion business. Bye guys.